I want to thank the organizers of this event for the opportunity to share my story with all of you today. But I don't want to begin without first recognizing this territory as indigenous land and recognizing that we are all migrants here. That we migrated by nature as most other living beings do. My name is Luz Viviana Mesa. I am an immigrant from Mexico and a Detroiter as of 2004. I have been an immigrant rights activist in Southeast Michigan for nearly a decade now, and I am currently in my last year of a dual master in public policy and applied economics here at the University of Michigan. I was heavily involved in the local efforts for the DREAM Act movement and other related issues here in Washtenaw County since 2010. Doing this work in Ann Arbor has been easier than in many other places, particularly considering the love people tend to have for immigrants who were brought here as children. This country has expressed a reasonable amount of sympathy for undocumented students or dreamers. The DREAM Act and DACA have been more popular and more widely supported than amnesty for all type policies. When we speak of the accomplishment of dreamers, we speak of them with a sense of pride for how much they've accomplished. We talk about how they've assimilated to the culture, speak the language perfectly, and only know this place to be home. When we attempt to make a case for their legalization, we remind others that they are here by no fault of their own. No fault. After all that our parents gave up for us to be here, we fault them for risking everything to bring us across the border. When I was three years old, my parents entrusted me with a relative who brought me across the border. This relative took me to a separate supermarket near the border before crossing, where I found a coloring book. I remember the agreement we made. I could have the coloring book and the crayons if I would agree to change my name for a whole day. I agreed. My name was the first thing I gave up for the American dream, like many migrants do. Little did I know that at the same time that I was crossing the border safely in the hands of a trusted relative, my mom was taking the less safe route across the border. She gave up her safety to bring me here. She gave up her peace of mind when she let her children cross the border without her. I came to know more about giving up our peace of minds. As part of a migrant family and a family of mixed status, over my lifetime, I experienced the journey of many loved ones across the border. The Coyote said they would try again at sundown, I would hear my father say. We would all wait anxiously for many hours until we heard from the coyote. Sometimes the answer was, we will try again tomorrow. Sometimes we were notified that our loved one had been detained, which we all knew would make their legal situation worse in the future. Other times, we received our loved ones late at night. The families of an estimated 7,000 migrants who have lost their lives crossing the border between 1998 in 2016, never heard from their loved ones again. When we are lucky enough to make it here with our lives, there is still more we must give up. By a show of hands, is anyone here a migrant to Ann Arbor? Have any of you moved here from a different state? How many of you go back and visit family members where you came from? Migrants give that up. We give up a chance to see our family in our home the moment we cross the border. Many of our parents have gone decades without seeing their own parents. And often our grandparents will pass away without any of their family seeing them or being there for their services. If the police knocks on the door, don't open it. Don't tell anyone you were born in Mexico. Forget about the boogeyman. These were the things I was afraid of when I was a child. The journey had taken my peace of mind when I was only three years old. 
Immigrant parents have to worry about themselves as they go out to work every day, but also about their undocumented children. As the current situation in Southeast Michigan has proven, at any moment, any of our undocumented community members can be deported without the opportunity to ever return to their home and their family here. I am here acutely aware of my privilege. I've had the very, very rare privilege of adjusting my status several, year, several years after migrating here. My family's case is the exception to the rule because despite having risked it all to be here like over 11 million other people have, it was pure luck that allowed us to adjust our immigration status. And I look at my life now after having lived in rural Mexico in my teenage years as well, and I am thankful to my parents for everything they did to give me this opportunity. Whether the current occupiers of this land want to call our parents' actions legal or illegal, migration was a form of survival for many of us. Our parents are heroes. And here I am, a Michigan alumna, and now nearing my second and third higher education degrees from the best public university in our country. And that's more than Mr. Trump can say for himself. I've worked hard for it, and I deserve what I've accomplished by my own merits. However, this would not be possible without the brave decisions my parents made for me. Yes, I am here by their fault. In May, I will become the most educated individual in my whole extended family here and in Mexico, and it is fully my parents' fault. See, my mother and father did not complete educations between, beyond elementary school. My father is one of the most intelligent people I know, and despite not having been able to attend school, he would sit with my siblings and I at the dinner table to teach us how to add, subtract, multiply, divide. And when we asked him how he learned to do math, despite not having attended school, he told us how he always paid very close attention during the very few seasons that he was allowed to go to school. My father's labor was needed at a very young age to support the rest of his family in rural Mexico. My father, along with my aunts and uncles, were only able to attend school if it wasn't planting or harvesting season. They were only able to attend school for a handful of months every year. My father took advantage of those few months because he enjoyed learning. He brought me here because he wanted me to have the opportunity to be in school for as long as I desired. And I think maybe now he regrets it a little bit because he's always wondering when I'll be finally done. <laughs> Unfortunately, I don't have a for sure answer to that question yet. Um, still, every time I embark on an academic or professional journey, as senseless as it is to my father, that after so many years in higher education, I'm still not making money, he lets me know he supports me. Every time I am recognized for my accomplishments, he is there. This was the dream. Our parents are the original dreamers and our accomplishments are the true American dream. So I ask that next time that you try to justify your support for immigrant children by blaming our parents for our presence here, you remember that who we are and what we've accomplished has only been made possible by the brave actions of our parents. Immigrant parents are the original dreamers and we are the American dream. Forget about weed. Legalize our parents. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you.